Hi guys, this is Miss Gold. Today's lesson is Module 2, Lesson 10, Multiplication and Division of Rational Numbers. Your outcomes for today's lesson are students recognize the rules for multiplying and dividing integers apply to rational numbers. Students interpret products and quotients of rational numbers by describing real world contexts. Students use the commutative and associative properties of multiplication to generate equivalent expressions. They use the distributive property of multiplication over addition to create equivalent expressions, representing the sum of two quantities with a common factor as a product and vice versa. Students recognize that any problem involving multiplication and division can be written as a problem involving only multiplication. So let's start with example one. Evaluate the expression below. So if I look at this, I could certainly go through and just multiply left to right, but that's not always the easiest approach. One of the things that I always look for is a way to get 10. So if I look here, I have negative two times negative five. So if I multiply those two together, we know a negative times a negative is a positive, and then two times five is 10. Once I have that, the next thing I notice is that if I multiplied this 2 and this 3, then I would get a 6, and we can multiply it times this 6 to get 36. So let's take our 2 and 10 and switch the order. So this is the commutative property that allows me to switch the order of multiplication. So when I do that, we can multiply our 2 times negative 3. So different signs result in a negative answer. So my answer here is going to be negative 6. Then we drop down everything else. And again, I think it would be easiest if we multiplied our 6s together. So why don't we switch the order of these two using the commutative property again. So I would have negative 6 times negative 6 times 10. So here, negative times the negative is a positive, and 6 times 6 is 36. And so you can see this becomes a much easier problem when we can multiply by 10, because we know we just have to add out a 0, making this final answer 360. Notice that that's a lot easier than trying to go through. Um, here, I would have 6 times 2 is 12, and a negative times a positive is a negative, so I have negative 12. Then I have to multiply that by negative 2, and I get negative 12 times negative 2 is a positive 24, but then I have to multiply it by 5. And once we do that, you know, trying to actually do out those calculations becomes quite a hassle. So that's why we want to use properties of real numbers to make our job easier, especially if we don't have the use of a calculator. So what is the sign of the product and how is the sign determined? Now, we went through and actually did the problem, but what if we just wanted to know the sign? So if I look at the numbers that I have, I have a negative, positive, negative, negative, negative. So if I go through here, we could look at negative times a positive would give us a negative. Then I still have the negative two, so we have another negative. I still have a negative 5, so we have another negative, and we still have the negative 3, so I have another negative. Now notice here, these two, a negative times a negative gives us a positive. These two also match up to make a positive. So once I match those up, I have a positive times a positive, and we know that is a positive. And so that matches our conclusion that we came up with a positive 360. For example 2, it says rewrite the mixed number as a sum then multiply using the distributive property. So we've learned how to take mixed numbers and write them as sums in the last um, half of our module. So we have negative six, and what we're gonna do is break this up. It's a positive five and one third, so this would be five plus one third. So I'm going to use the distributive property, and the distributive property is exactly what it says it is. I'm going to distribute the number on the outside, which in this case is a negative six, into both of the terms that are inside the parentheses. So we would do negative 6 times 5 plus negative 6 times 1 third. 
So here we can easily do six times five is 30 and a negative times a positive is a negative. So my final number here is negative 30. Over here, if I turn this into a fraction, what I'm really doing is six times one is six, one times three is three. So we have six over three and we have our negative times positive is a negative. So if I look at that number, we have six divided by three is two and a negative divided by a positive is a negative. Now I just have to use the rules that we learned for addition. So we know it's same signs keep and add. Same signs, so I'm going to keep the sign and add the numbers. 30 plus 2 is 32. With example 3 we're going to do just the opposite. We are going to take out the common element that is in both of the terms. So if I look here, I see a multiplied by 16 here and a multiplied by 16 here. Now I could go through and actually multiply these out, but if I think about it, it might be easier to actually take that 16 out. So I would take 16 out of it and what's left is negative 3 eighths plus 1 fourth. So here I can easily turn 1 fourth into a common denominator of 8 by multiplying each of these by 2. And so I get negative 3 eighths plus 2 over 8, 16. Then we have negative 3 plus 2, so same signs keep and add, different signs subtract. So I do 3 minus 2 is 1. Take the sign of the bigger number. 3 is bigger and it's negative, so that is negative. And then for fractions, we always keep the denominator. So this becomes a much easier problem than what we started with. So here I would do 16 divided by 8 is 2, and we have a positive times a negative is a negative. Okay, let's take a look at our final example, number 4. Now, you'll notice in this, we don't just have multiplication, we also have division. And not only that, it's division of fractions. My suggestion to you is to always turn division into multiplication. So instead of dividing by a fraction, we are instead going to multiply by the reciprocal. This is kind of the same idea that we used when we had subtraction. Notice how we added the opposite. So with this, instead of dividing, we're multiplying by the reciprocal, which means to flip the numbers on our fractions. So here, I notice I have that dividing by a fraction. So instead, what I want to do is instead of dividing, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which would flip our 2 and 3, making this 3 over 2. Now, I don't have division here, so this stays the same. I don't have division here, so this stays the same. But I do have division here. So instead of dividing, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. Now notice the reciprocal is not going to change the sign. It's just going to switch the numbers. So 1 over 2 becomes 2 over 1, which is 2. Now that I've done that, I want to start looking for ways to make this problem easier for me. Now, I think it's pretty easy to just go ahead and do 1 times 3 halves, we know is 3 halves. The other thing that makes this hard is the fact that this is a fraction, but do you notice that this has a 2 on the bottom and this has a 2 on the top? So why don't we use the commutative property to switch the order and put those next to each other? So we would have, let's uh, switch these two and these two at the same time. Negative 8 times 3 halves times negative 2 times 3. So here I can turn this into a fraction and so that tells me I have 2 on the top, 2 on the bottom, which is 2 divided by 2 cancels to become 1 and then there's a negative here so this is going to be negative 1. So now I don't have fractions anymore which makes this a lot easier. So we can do um, associative property allows me to group these two together. So I'm grouping them using brackets because I already have parentheses in there. I don't want to get confused. So I want to make sure I use something other than parentheses to group them together. So we have negative 8 times 3 times negative 1. A positive times a negative is a negative, and then 3 times 1 is 3. Now, 
I think it'd be easiest if we actually group these two together. So again, I'm going to use the associative property to group them together. And I have a negative times a positive is a negative. So here we would have, we're just going to write our negative 8 because we're not working with that right now. Then I have a negative times a positive is a negative, And 3 times 3 is 9. And so now this becomes a much easier problem to deal with. A negative times a negative is a positive, and 8 times 9 is 72. In this lesson, you have learned the rules that apply for multiplying and dividing integers apply to rational numbers. We can use the products and quotients of rational numbers to describe real-world situations, and multiplying and dividing using strictly order of operations is not always the most efficient method. The properties of multiplication allow us to manipulate expressions by rearranging or regrouping factors that are easier to compute. Where division is involved, we can easily rewrite division as multiplication to allow for the use of these properties. And we learned that that rule was multiplying by the reciprocal. Signs of expressions with products and quotients can easily be determined by checking whether the number of negative terms is even or odd. And we actually refer to that last piece in the example here. If you actually count up what we have, um, once we did the first group here of positive and negative, I had one, two, three, four which is an even number of odds, and an even number of odds results in a positive. And basically what you can think of it as, they always match up if you have an even number. If you have an odd number, there's always gonna be that odd man out. And so that would leave an extra negative, making our result negative if there's an odd number.